Hey everybody, Ken Madden with Gold Strike, and today I'm going to show you how to install the Shock and Awe System full bike kit on your Goldwing. It's a great way to enhance lighting, as you can see, and uh, let's get right to it. This is the Shock and Awe 2.0 controller. It has a whole bunch of wires coming off. I'll show you what these are. Number one, this is your manual control. This is going to end up down here on the saddlebag. That is so you can control it without using the Bluetooth. You also will have this line right here, this little red dead end wire. This goes to your brake and this will, I'll show you what that does when we get to that point. This is your power and ground and it's fused. We're going to run these to the battery first. And then these are your three leads that go to the lights. Now there's three different channels. Each channel can be operated all together or individually. There's channel one, two, and three, and you can tell which one's which by which one's the longest. So the longest one's three, the shortest one's number one. So let's get the seat off here and we'll get to installing this. So we want to locate where everything's going to go. And what you do here for the manual controller, I'm just going to place it here. We're going to mount that about in that area, but we're going to do that last. So we're going to run the wire back and around here. This controller magic box ends up right in this area here. We're going to run these wires right under this bar, like so. And those are going to come under like that. Now your black wire goes to the ground that's over here. Red wire goes to the positive. So make sure those are nice and tight. Now your power is hooked up and the controller is now ready to test the three channels, which I recommend we do right away before we go any further. So this part isn't absolutely necessary, but I always like to do this just to make sure that I understand how everything works. So I'm going to plug three LED strips, these little LED strips here from the kit, into the three different channels. And I'm going to open up the app. I'm going to turn the button, turn the app on and make sure all three channels are lit up, which they are. And then make sure I can see the device, which I can. It's right there. So this is just checking to make sure everything works. And once you've confirmed that, you get channel one, two, and three right there. Everything's on, everything's working. You know, we can go, all, go along and proceed with the installation. Okay, the beauty of the shock and awe system is you can set it up just about any way you'd like to. For this particular bike, we are going to set up half of it on the right, half of it on the left to be two different channels. So you can run them together, you can run them separately, you can decide on that later. But to do that, it's great if you can take this, we've created this, uh, this chart for you of what you're going to need for each side. And I've laid it out here. This is the uh, left side and that's the right side. We're going to get started and that way by starting out with this, it's a, lot, uh, it's a lot less confusing because we do add some extra pieces that you probably won't use, but you can expand the kit with later. So don't throw those away, save them. So let's get to uh, wiring this thing up. Okay, to start placing these LEDs, it's handy to have some tape. I like to tape them in place first, get all the wiring done, get it checked out, make sure the lighting's the way you want, and then you can go back and stick all the parts on. So I'm just gonna take a little tape here. And the first one we wanna put is gonna be right up in here. Okay, and make sure that you're, you have a male and a female end, that the male end is aiming back towards where you're going to want to attach it to the rest of the wires. And I'm just going to put a little wire tape on. I'm just going to temporarily stick that right down there. Now, coming from our controller here, I'm going to start with channel number one, which is the short channel, and use a Y adapter right here. Plug that in. Now half of that Y adapter is going to go to a 20 inch extension. And I'm going to feed that up, carefully feed that up and around and plug that into the light that we just taped on to the bottom of the handle. Now all of these connections, we have some dielectric grease. It's a good idea to go through and make sure you use dielectric grease on every connection and that'll protect it from the elements. I will do that at the end. Now with all of the Y adapters here, this is, can get confusing, but your first Y adapter that comes off, this one is gonna go towards the front of the bike, towards the engine. And we're gonna start with that one by attaching one of those end right there. The second Y adapter, which you can see right here, 
this is going to light the rear of the bike. So one of these needs to go plugged in right here. This is going to be for the side cover. So this one, this one's going to deadhead right there. This will go in the side cover. This other one, you're going to take another 20 inch, plug that in like that. And then you take two of these, plug them together. And then this is going to go on the bottom of the saddlebag. So we'll have to feed those wires down and around. Okay, next we're going to, we're going to run these two, um, feed these up, kind of fish them up through the bottom underneath where the exhaust is. But uh, I'm going to actually turn them on. Makes it a little bit easier to see as you're fishing through. So you're going to go underneath. And right, that forwardmost hinge, you want to pop in right behind that. So see that right there? We're going to pull these two lights up, just like this. We'll tie the, all the lights up here later. And then it's important, the, the lights are going to go basically in this position here, facing down. You want to get this connection between the two lights. You want that on top of the hinge there. Next, we're going to wipe off the area underneath where this is going to stick to, and we're going to stick these two lights down. All right, now we're ready to stick these on. As everything's clean, the wires are run. I'm going to turn them off for just a moment. And now, as I mentioned before, we're going to put a little dielectric grease and just do it just like this. A little bit on the ends there. Plug it in. You want to make sure not to get it all, all over the place. This is why I didn't do it earlier. Do it just at the last minute before you stick everything down. A little bit here. You don't need a lot. You don't have to overload it. Just enough. And then that's our 20 inch extension there. We'll plug that in. All right. I'm going to wipe the grease off my hands, peel these back, get them in position, and stick them down. And then I'm just pinching it with my thumb on the bottom. I know it's a little hard to see. It's hard to get on the camera under there, but we're just going to pinch that in the bottom and move it back and forth, giving pressure for 15, 20 seconds here just to make sure that everything sticks. All right, now we're going to move on to this one. Same process making sure the, the connector's over the hinge. And we're just gonna put stick that down. Now, you're, you're left with a, a connector. You'll see this one's, not, nothing's gonna connect to this, which is fine. We can, we can just stick that one down right here. In the kit, you'll notice these. And what are these for? It's just for that. You take one of these off here. Stick it to the back of the connector, like this. Now you can, you can put that connector wherever you need it to be so it'll be out of the way. You know, if we put it right there, I want to make sure that this will still close. Let's take a look there. Now that I know that it will, we'll just we'll place that there like that. We just confirm it's going to close. Everything's fine. All right. Now these are all attached. The other side is the same as this side, just in reverse. So you do the same process on the other side. Clean, make sure you got them where you want them, and put them on. Next, we want to uh, route this wire so it, it stays clear of these two holes, because we don't want to have it there. You don't also don't want to have it laying down on the exhaust here. So we're going to take this push pin and this push pin. We're going to pull those out and feed this wire in behind this side cover here. And you do that by just push in the center and then just take it out like that. Now we'll just kind of pull on this a little bit, pull that back, and you take your wire, and don't yank on the wire real hard, give yourself some slack, but just slide the wire in behind. And don't forget to put the uh, two pop rivets back in. So 
we got that in there. Now you can pull the slack out of it. Don't yank on it, but just pull enough slack out. And we're going to take one of our little our tie downs here. And I think I'm going to put it right on the inside here. And we're going to tie that wire there so it won't go back down and hit the exhaust. I'm going to run the wire up through it and zip tie it. All right, with that secure, we'll snip off the zip tie in a minute and we'll move on to putting this light that was dangling here on the side cover. So you get your side cover here. This light's actually going to sit inside of this um, vent right here. And to make that happen and have it look really good, you simply take out these three screws, one, two, three, and then um, we're going we're gonna to adhere it on the other side of that. Let me show you how to do that. All right, with the screws out, you want to make sure you get it in the right position here. So that needs to sit like that. So that means this light, that's going to sit like that in there, is going to need to come up and around down from the top. And it's going to get attached in there, something like that. All right, you want to make sure before you put anything on here that there's no grease or wax or anything on there. So you want to wash this very, very well. I'm using an ammonia-based window cleaner, um, some rubbing alcohol or something like that it will work. Also, like a mineral spirits would work okay too. Don't ever use lacquer thinner, but once that's nice and clean, like that, now we can put the light on. Now, I've got the light here. Something you want to know when you put this on on this one is with that light, as it, as it comes down to the top, you're going to stick that on but leave enough space on the bottom so that this end piece can wrap around the back side because when you put this back together, you don't want to have this hanging out. So leave yourself a little bit of space on the bottom there. Don't get it right to that. Put it right there. When you're done, it should look like this. And then that can fold around and we'll put this back together like so. And see how that sticks back here? That's what you want. So this is why we use the Y here and made a disconnect because you pull these side covers off quite frequently. So when you need to do that, you can simply unplug it and then put it back down to the table. So we're gonna assemble this back down on the table unplugged. Just like that. So you want to be careful not to strip these out. I'm using a power tool, but the last, last little thread, I'll make sure that I just turn by hand. Yeah, just like that. Now that's nice and solid. You can go up here, plug back into your Y. Just make sure everything's still working. You can, you can see how that light is on. Now this can come apart again because we're going to continue running the wires up to the front of the bike. Okay, next light in the chain ends up in this engine area right under here. And to um, get this under there, we're going we're gonna to slide it under here. But this particular bike has the Gold Strike frame covers and passenger comfort peg. So we do need to remove these to get this in behind there and have a nice clean installation, What you do with these three bolts right here. So if you didn't have the Gold Strike frame covers and uh, passenger mount here, what you have from the factory is this right here with three little screws. Now you don't even need to touch this for the next step. So if you didn't have any of that other things going on here, you don't have to worry about this. You can just keep that on just the way it is. What we got to do now though, is we want to pull this cover off and we're going to feed this wire loom through the back behind the frame and back out in here. And we're going to stick that next light right up to that part right there under the frame. So let's just pull this off. It pops off from the bottom here and then comes up. Be careful because it's got a little top down little grommet here. So you want to lift it up when you do that. So just pop it off the bottom and lift it up. That comes right off. Now we can run this wire. So you want to take this. We've added a eight inch extension 
between the uh, Y and this light pod. We're just going to run that behind here. Just like that. So it comes out and then, it's, like I said, it's going to stick right here. So we're going to wipe that off and make sure the wires are all run behind this little cable tube here. And then we'll clean that and stick that on, get the extension here and move it up into the next area. So when you put this on, don't put it right up to the edge because this cover still has to slide in there. You want to slide it back a little bit and um, you know, about I don't know, half an inch or so back from this edge to make sure that that cover will still slide in there. Then you just simply peel the tape and stick it on. Now we're going to grab a 20 inch, plug it into here and move on to the next section. Okay, next you're gonna pull this panel off right here. So we're gonna feed a wire up inside of there and put a light pot in here and it'll light up that whole inner radiator area. You just do that by pulling out this bolt right here. That one out. Now, what you need to do is there's some clips inside of here that kind of hold this, all, this whole panel on here. You gotta get a little bit of violent and just start pulling out. Like that. So we're gonna put a Y adapter here, just like that, and we wanna bring it underneath this flap so it comes out on that side there. Now, to make it really easy to take care of this and, uh, and be able to put the, the light inside of here. We want to make this so we can take it off. We don't have to remove the whole panel. We can just, um, we can just loosen it. So there's a, you're going to need to take out, there's a screw right here. And a push pin right here. Another push pin right here. And then this whole panel will be loose enough where we can get some get to get the wiring in behind it. So I'll start popping these out. All right, with that now, you can see we got some room. So you want to plug into one of these your light. We're going to place it inside here. This is where it's handy to actually turn the lights on if you have them off like I am. So I'm going to do that quick. I'm just going to turn these on. All right. There's a ledge just inside of here that this light will sit on beautifully without having the end of it get into the fan. So the end is going to pop out down here, the other end, just like that. You want to have that pop out. And then the light's going to sit on a ledge just in here. Next, you want to wipe off that ledge. It's easier to hold it out with one hand to get in there with the other. You don't want to push it out too far. You want to wipe that off so it's nice and clean in there. And then go ahead and peel the backer off and stick that one in. So what we're going to do now is put a 20 inch onto here. And before we tighten this all down, we're going to run this onto the inside. So it should come out like something like that. Just like that. Now we're going to replace this panel. We're going to put the, the, our push pin in, replace the bolt here, the push pin on this side, because now we're done with everything we need to do inside of here. Put that pin back in there. That should be all good and all good. I'm going to tuck, tuck the wiring up inside on that side. Replace the front bolt. There we go. And that last push pin just inside up in here. Now sometimes with these push pins right here, you got to really push on this right here to make sure that they, you're getting a good connection. Listen for the snap. And then that's back attached. And then this piece here and go back in. I've seen online some people cut this piece off right here, this little tab. 
to make it a little easier to install. I'm not going to do it at the, at the moment, but if you're in and out of your bike a lot, if you trim that tab off, it is a little easier to install. So there's no great way to do this. You just got to kind of muscle it in there. And then we'll replace the screw here and the screw here. All right, that's buttoned up. Now we're gonna move around to the front of the bike and get the LEDs in the kind of upper fork area and then down into the fender. So we've got our 20 inch extension pulled through. I like to run it kind of right behind the brake line. Just follow the brake line off the brake caliper up and uh, go behind it. And I've put, as you noticed, some of these little, these little adhesive clips that come with the, the uh, kit. And these will it help to adhere the wire and keep these from uh, keep the wiring from getting in, un, into any of the moving parts as you're going down the road. We're going to leave the backing, the adhesive backing, on it right now because we'll attach those later. But we're going right now. We're going to clean off the front of the fork and the bottom of here. We're going to put the LEDs, and um, then I'll show you how to place the LEDs and make sure you get them pointing the right direction to run down to the fender after we go from here down to here. Okay, so here's our LED. As you can see, it's going to plug in here, like so. And I've got the power on just so we can take a look at it easier to see. I want to put it right up in here, and notice I'm, I'm crossing over with it, and we're going to tie these wires off up inside of the, in the fairing so you're not going to see them. But we're going to put this LED right along this back edge right there and we want this end to be pointing out because we need to run this back around underneath the fender to get to the the light in the front fender so let's get this one stuck down and then we can we can arrange the wiring the way we want Let's tie off this wires. I'm going to start with just giving the wire a little bit of slack down by where the brake line is and putting a zip tie around it where the brake line is and that'll be the base that we can start from and then work up to where the LED is. Now to get our wire lead up to this area right here we're going to need to take the fender off. And it's simple just these four bolts. Something to remember the bolts that are on the bottom have the plastic washer like that little nylon plastic washer. So you want to keep that. The top bolts don't have a washer at all. All right, with that, take that fender right off. At this point, we can take our LEDs and we're going to put them right here. That way we can, we can tape down the edges to make sure that they don't flop around. And we can do both sides right now, but just make sure that you have the male part pointing to the rear of the fender. So we're going to place this right here. You want to make sure that this end that's facing forward is in this crease. Because we're going to stick that down so it's not flopping around. We don't want it to hit the wheel. And we're going to do that on both sides. Okay, let me show you the path of least resistance to get this from the back to the front. This is your brake line right here and your ABS lines and stuff like that. You want to follow those because this is, this is the amount of movement that you're going to need in this wire. So we're going to follow that right around like this. I want you to come behind them though, behind all these lines. So feed, feed this behind everything. Okay, so you're behind it all. And then you're gonna come on the inside around here and it'll pop out about there, okay? From there, we're gonna pop this out. It needs to come in 
like that. Make sure you're not caught on anything. I'm caught on something down here. There we go. So you want to make sure here's your wire that that has all the that has all the play it's going to need in it to go around there, and the wire needs to come out right here. And when you put the fender on, you just plug it into that, and there'll be one on each side. Now that we've got our fender kind of situated with the uh, with the LEDs placed on there, now's a good time to go around. We're finished with the whole left side of the bike. We're going to go back around and tie up all the wires and replace the engine cover and that kind of thing. So uh, I'm going to start up in front here. And one of the things we need to do is take this wire and we're going to zip tie that to the brake line so it has the proper amount of, of um, uh, clearance and slack. And then this wire in here, that comes up from the, from the engine. We're going we're gonna to use one of these little clips. Flip that around for you so you can see it. The little clips with the adhesive back and we're going to stick that right to the side frame here and that'll keep that wire from getting intertwined with any problems. And when you're zip tying this, make sure you leave, you don't want to just pull everything tight, make sure you leave a little slack. You're going to want that to be still popping out there. But leave a little slack in there. I usually put a zip tie right on the middle first. So this is what it should look like. This should follow around here like this, and then that'll allow the wheel to turn and go up and down without having any, any stress on the wire. Next, we're going to tidy up these wires here. I put another clip on that side. We'll, we'll roll that up and just kind of tape that inside of there, just inside the panel, and that'll hold it up. And this side right here, this wire comes from the back here and up to here. We're gonna put a clip on the back side of there. That leaves this one, this is half of the Y. Now this particular bike is getting the engine lighting panels that also have an LED that ties in on the back side that's sold separately to the system. We'll do a different video and show you how to install that, but that's why I have an extra one hanging here. We're gonna do the same on the other side. Next we have uh, this all set now. We're going to replace the engine cover and it starts with this little tab right here going down onto that and then you just pop it in. tuck up under. I'm going to replace the, the parts that we took off of here. All right, that back on here, we can move to tidying up this whole mess of wires we left. Okay, now in this area where the wires come through here, you want to make sure that, that this piece here with the little rubber grommet and this rubber grommet aren't covered. You know, if the wires are like that, it won't, your side cover won't want to go on very well. So we're going to tie everything together in behind that. Start by pulling this up. Remembering this is your loose one, this is the open one that goes to this side cover that gets replaced after you put the seat back on. So you want to keep that to be around this area here. So if you pull this back through about to there, and then what we're going to do here is take these wires and tie them off with a zip tie right in here just to make it so they still have movement, but we're going to zip tie them together that way so they don't get in the way of this. Just like that. We'll trim this off and that should be it. So if you remember, right in the beginning of the video, we taped this light up here and we put the controller right here. Now's the time that we're going to uh, attach those. So make sure you wipe off the area really well on both the surfaces. Okay, so the light goes just on the inside of here and shines in towards the bike there. And then the loose, the loose end, you can just take one of those little adhesive squares, put it on the back side, and just hide it underneath, and it'll disappear. This piece here, this is our controller. And I like to have that set right about there like that, just kind of adjacent to the, the, um, the heated seat adjustment. So we'll put that on. Right. Turn the lights on. We'll take a look. Now I'll have that nice look like that. Put 
So now this side is done. Let's move on to the other side. Okay, another great feature of the shock and off system is the brake feature. So what this does by hooking this wire into your brake line, or brake wire rather, using this, you're going to be able to, when you squeeze the brakes, all of the shock and all lights will go red. So first you need to locate your brake wire. And on the stock bike, it is this green wire here with a red stripe. A little tricky to see there, but in this, you'll see a green wire with a red stripe. I'm not gonna hook it to that one today because we have a bunch of other lighting on here. So I'm gonna go right to our Gold Strike um, wiring harness. This is our 48,000 wiring harness. And you wanna look for a green wire with a pink stripe on it like that. And then with this little guy here, you're gonna take the gray side, just unscrew it. You see it has a little point to it. I'm gonna take this. We're gonna put that up so it sits like this, right through, kind of pass through, and we're gonna screw this down to it. Screw it down so it's tight like that. Now this other end is where we're gonna place this. I've taken um, about a quarter inch of the sheathing off the side so it exposes a wire. You're gonna unscrew the, this piece here. Feed it through, just like so. And then just screw it down. Making sure it's tight. There we go. Now, I'm gonna turn the bike on and hit the brake and you'll see what happens here. I'll hold this light up so you can see what actually how it works. So now when I squeeze the brake, it goes red and it stays red while that brake is on. Now all of the lights in the bike are doing that. And if I turn the shock and off system off, so now the, the system's off, the lights will still run. Now you can go into the app and change that if you want, but so even if all your lighting is off, this is a safety thing. Now you can squeeze it and all of your lights will go red. So that's the simple way to set up your shock and off system with the brake feature. So to start out the right hand side, we're gonna start out with a Y. We're gonna attach that to the number two, which is the mid length connector here, and that is channel two. And from there, we're gonna run this kind of underneath any other wiring you have up here. We're gonna take one of the 20 inches, one of the long 20 inch ones. I'm gonna plug that in. And come around here. That one's gonna come up to the, um, the grab handle light. And then the other side of this, I'm gonna have come underneath there and we're gonna put two Ys on this. So here's your first Y, and the second one. Okay, this is the LED for underneath here. We'll just plug that in, get it out of the way. Now I've got the power on, so you can kind of see what we're doing as we go through it. So we're gonna take two here and daisy chain them together, and that'll plug in here with the 20 inch in between. Right there. And that's off one of the Ys. This is gonna go down in the saddlebag area. This one here is gonna go behind the side cover. So that goes right behind the side cover. So next, all we gotta do is open the saddlebag and install these. So I've got our, our two LED strips here attached to the 20 inch, and just like we did on the other side, we're gonna put them underneath here like this, making sure that your, um, your wiring goes over the top of that hinge like that on each side. So with that, we'll, we'll, I've wiped this off, we're gonna peel this off and, in, and install them. On this side, we wanna tie this off right here, so that wire's gonna come in behind, but you don't wanna get too tight on it, because remember, you have the 
you have your heated seat that you need to deal with. So don't, don't make this super tight, but just get it snugged up so the wire just has enough room to move. And that'll just keep it out of the way. So now we're gonna run the leads to the engine. So we're gonna need an eight inch right here. We're gonna plug that into this Y that comes off that we had put on before. And then we're going to attach a light and you wanna have the light on at this point, it'll be very helpful. I've got the, the, the brightness turned way down, but we're gonna go in through here and out on the other side. It's a little tricky to get this because you wanna go above this hose. Right here, there's a hose. You wanna go above that and around on the inside. If you can see that. Then just feed it through. And then reach in. Now you got it, you can pull it. And pull it gently. Trying to keep the light on up there for you. And we'll come through over to the other side. And then you've got it here, ready to adhere underneath this. Okay, we've got this out. We're gonna attach this underneath here, wipe it off and clean it. But first, let's get these two Ys and we're gonna plug them in here. And this is going to, these two are gonna go forward. Then what I like to do is take these right here and we're just gonna run them right underneath, just like that. And I'm just gonna wipe off this area underneath, make sure this is clean. We'll let that dry and then apply the light. We'll tuck this up underneath. And now, this one here is gonna end up going to the engine light that we're gonna put on later. And these are gonna feed up into the vent where we're gonna go to next and show you how to install that. Okay, so we're gonna get uh, this little guy up inside of here. Just like on the other side, you got a screw here and a screw here, and then you pop that pa panel out. And um, then you're gonna wanna loosen this up a little bit. You're gonna have a screw here and then one of those little push darts here and there'll be one more push dart in here. So I'm gonna get going on that. Okay, we plug that light in there, like so. Now inside of here, we're gonna use this as our light to show. There's a ledge right there. See this ledge where my finger is? That's gonna wanna sit. situated just like that on that ledge now I'm gonna wipe that off and install it okay coming off of the lead from inside of the engine you should have the lead come out right here for the front side and then we're gonna attach a 20 inch um, extension on here and we're gonna feed this in behind and on top of there's a radiator hose right here you want to go on top of that so that just feeds through it feeds through actually pretty easy for once <laughs> so you pull that through there until you get it up like that. Now we're going to follow the brake line down again, once again. We're going to go in behind this until this pops out right up in here. And then go in behind the fender. And we want to have this, this lead end up right in here just like on the other side. So when we put the fender on, we can just plug those two in, attach the fender. With this end sitting in about this position, loose, that's a good time to come back here and just put one, one zip tie on the line, on the brake line right here just to hold it. The wires are all secured up front here going to the fender. And with that, now's a good time to reinstall the, um, the side cover in the trim panel that goes down here. And then we can put the front fender on, plug it in, make sure those are all working. Button up the rest of the wires, tie up any loose ends, and um, see what we got. So I've plugged in the LEDs on both sides of the fender. Now I'm just reinstalling the fender. And once we get that in, we're gonna double check and make sure our wiring is still nice and clear. Make sure, get it down on the ground. You can turn the wheel, make sure that there's nothing binding before you go for a ride. All right, that one's set up. The only thing we have to do now is, is we're gonna install that last LED in the side cover, in behind on the side cover by the seat. Button everything up, put the seat on, go for a ride. Just like we did on the other side, we're gonna get our little LED to go inside of here. 
by simply removing these three, three screws and then we'll stick this down. Just gotta tighten these up by hand, and make sure I don't strip anything. Now take a look here and you see a side cover, you see the light shining through here. And that'll sit back on there nice. So now all that's left to do is button this back up, get the seat on, reinstall everything, and see what it looks like all finished. One other option you might want to consider, if you have our LED engine lights, we also have a kit that goes on the back side of this to light up the engine here. There's a couple different ways you can wire it in, and let me show you how to do it right now. It's really simple. So this is the light pod here. It actually sits in, there's a wall right against this back wall right here. It sits in there. Now there's two screw bosses that are the screws for the bottom here. These come up and you want to get in behind there. So you hold this wire up a little bit. You're going to slide that in back like this. And when you get to about there, then you want to peel off the adhesive and then we'll stick it to that back. If you have a little screwdriver or something, it might help you just push it back. And then just give a little pressure on it so it adheres. And there you go, that's installed. And then we're simply gonna put it on here and I'll show you how we can wire it. On this bike, we already have a shock and awe system set up and channel two of the three channels ends up right here. So there's a couple ways we can do it. We can plug it into this and then everything will light up on the same channel as this one, or we can run it to channel three, which the engine panels will then have their own lighting. So to get it out, I'm not gonna do a complete installation here, but you just simply take these two bolts off. This is just to get that engine lighting panel on there. And for complete instructions, go to goldstrike3d.com and it has detailed images. So you take these two bolts out, these guys, we're not gonna reuse them, the kit comes with new ones. You're gonna to wanna to put the two spacers in these holes, just like so. And then take this, make sure the wires are kinda of running off to the side so they're not in the way. And we're gonna slip that in there carefully. And it has two long, chrome bolts that come with the kit. I'm going to put those in. Like that. All right, now, as I had mentioned, so if you wanted to plug this in on this side, with the shock and all lights already lead, this lead already from the shock and all system, you can just plug it in right here. And you can see now that it lights up. We'll put it on a little brighter setting so you can see it better. So that's what it's gonna look like. Now, this lead here, this runs up to run the light that goes right here. So I didn't plug that in on this video because I wanted to show the shock and all without it. But again, go to goldstrike3d.com for that. But it's really that simple. Now I'm just going to run this lead up. We're going to feed it through the, the bike up to where the controller is on the shock and eye unit. And we're going to plug that into its own channel. There you go. That's what it looks like all together. Uh, everything ties up nicely. It has a great look and uh, very easy to install. We have a limited lifetime warranty on the LEDs. So there's a shock and awe as used with the engine LED panels. Well, let's take a look at what we've accomplished here today. So I've brightened this thing up. It's really, really cool. We've got three channels going on as we, as we installed it. So I've got it set on the right channel just to be a solid color, kind of an aqua green. The left side, I've got blinking purple, and I put some engine fire colors in the, uh, in the engine area. So as you can see, it's a pretty neat way of doing it. You can have it all in one color too if you want just one color, that's pretty simple. And uh, go to goldstrike3d.com. There's videos there that explains the app and, and more of this. This was just more of a how to get it on your bike. But um, with that, I really appreciate you guys watching. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's one more cool thing. Remember when we put the brake, uh, we, we attached the brake system? Let me show you what that does. With the bike turned on, now when you squeeze the brake, everything goes red. 
So that's a nice safety thing too. And even if the, even if the lights are off, and you don't have them blinking right here, everything will still go red. So anyway, I'm Ken with Gold Strike. Thanks for watching me enlighten our bike, and we will talk to you next time.